straight so you can have a seat. That's better. I'm rolling. Okay. So tell me a little bit about your job specifically. I have a place that I could just stash cool sea animals. Like how many people can say that they could just go pick up a sea creature and, you know, have this giant home for them? I'm Tatiana Reinierson. I'm a professor of oceanography here at the Graduate School of Oceanography. I'm Corinne Truesdale. I am a part-time PhD student here. Yes, my name is Edward Baker. I am the manager of the Marine Science Research Facility. My name is Ian Bishop. I am a fourth-year PhD student here at GSO. My name is Riley Ann Secor, and I am a PhD student. And uh, we're uh, located at a remarkably lovely spot on the coast of the West Passage of Narragansett Bay. We have these excellent facilities here. So we have the aquarium, the marine science research facility. We have a laboratory that students are using to create their own small replication of what happens in the actual natural world. And what is super unique that I think about the facility is that we have flow through seawater directly from Narragansett Bay that gets pumped in. And it's more natural for the organisms that live there. It's a wonderful facility in that, you know, researchers can study anything from the surface to the sediment, and we can emulate almost any condition on the planet except for vastness and depth. It has environmental chambers that allow researchers to bring organisms from the poles, for example. I study a small type of phytoplankton called a diatom. They're kind of like uh, small single-celled plants in the ocean. We ask questions about how these organisms are going to respond to climate change. Species can cope with climate change in a number of ways. It can move, like the temperature is too cold here, we'll go where it's warmer, where I'm used to it. It can adapt or it can die, really. Uh, in the Southern Ocean, where most of my culture has come from, they can't really move because they're already at the coldest part of the world and we don't want them to die. So. So they really have to adapt. And so we have uh, right now something we call Little Antarctica. Where I take single individual cells that are collected from the ocean and grow them up and maintain them in a culture. The cultures that we have are small phytoplankton that form the base of the food web. And we have cultures that we collected while on an icebreaker uh, in the Southern Ocean. And we do really cool experiments where we look at various environmental conditions like salinity or uh, CO2 concentrations to see how they respond physiologically. But we should really care about what they're doing. A large portion of the nutrients that feed food webs on rich coastal regions that we know of as, as rich fisheries come from the Southern Ocean. So my PhD work focuses on the commercial fishery for Jonah crab, which is a species they catch in lobster traps in Southern New England. So Jonah crab live really far offshore in really deep waters. So it's not a very well understood species. And so it's necessary for us to bring them in to a facility like the aquarium here and observe them to get growth information and data that we can use in modeling the species. And my research specifically is an energy budget on lobsters that have shell disease and don't have shell disease. So a happy, healthy, completely good lobster probably won't get shell disease. But if there are any sort of environmental stressors, such as temperature or pollution, that leaves the lobster more susceptible to getting this disease. Um, and there's something that I find really exciting about working in a field where you're coming up with the best answer you can with the data that you have available. The aquarium has been uh, in service since about 1970 and has produced an incredible number of masters and PhD dissertations. So whether it's high school students, um, undergraduates, graduates, even some of my postdocs, you know, they're still learning. We're all still learning. Uh, it's so exciting to see them come in, uh, really have that nugget of interest, and then helping them along that path. There's a lot of opportunity for students to be able to pursue their lines of research, and they they make every opportunity they can available to students to be able to do that. And by the time they graduate, they are competent scientists that uh, can really dig in and, and kind of push, push the envelope of knowledge forward. And that's hands down the most exciting thing about my job. It, it's got tremendous sizzle for visitors. Seeing firsthand 
marine life, which is very much like seeing life from another planet. So when the children come through, and even the adults, honestly, their mind is like blown. They see all these little tiny lobsters going like this, and, and they get super excited. And it, it just sort of, that's why aquariums are so wonderfully popular. Just brings people into another life form. I think it's, uh, it has a spiritual quality and a fascination.